HDI should be connected. You can kind of see the laptop for me. It should be fine. Wipe that up. Doesn't matter. It does. It does it mess up the thing? Mm -mm. Okay. Fine. We close the window actually, just because it's a little fat highway here. I think. Yeah. Fine. Okay. This fire alarm goes off. That was so far for us. We'll be back <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Take <Take-tick. laughs> Hey guys. Welcome online. Hey everybody. Money. What's up? Nice. Uh, it's just loading right now. Can you tell your my dad joke? Your dad yeah. joke. Tell some dad jokes, father. I don't actually. I'm so bad at telling jokes. I can't tell jokes at all. Are there people actually listening right now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, hello everyone. Uh, you might be wondering about the setup of the table here. The candles look beautiful, and the the table is set up very nicely. But they wanted it angled just like this. They said this was my best angle. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was good. <laughs> So, all right, cool. <laughs> Do we want to wait longer, or are we gonna kick off? This is only one person. From what I could see. Great. Nice. Cool. Well, that's fine. All right. Well, we make a start anyway. Yeah. Sure. Lovely. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Amen. So we ask you, Lord, to be with us as we start this Bible study and uh, help us to really give you this time and to pay attention. Help us to be open to what it is that you want us to learn. Help us to come to know you more and your plan for our lives. We say together, glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Lady, Spouse of the Holy Spirit, pray for us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, welcome, everybody who's watching, and also you guys as well. It's great to have you. So, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be looking at a passage from the Bible, at a really important passage from the Gospel of St. John. And the reason we are looking at this one is because this is the big reading for Holy Thursday. So this is the reading that uh, we listen to for the Mass of the Lord's Supper, where we remember in a particular way the Last Supper that Jesus celebrated with the Apostles. So that's the reason that we're looking at this Gospel today. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to read through it twice. I've asked Rachel and Joe to read read through the the, the passage uh, for us. It might be different from your translation, and if that's the case, that's fine. Don't worry about it. It might sound just slightly different. It's the same thing. It's just maybe in slightly different language. Uh, when we are done with that, reading through it twice, what I want you to do is, as we're looking at this, or listening to it, or reading it, as you guys are doing at home, uh, I want you to underline anything that you don't understand, or anything that you really like, or anything that you want to kind of focus back on. Because what we'll do is we'll circle back to that stuff, and maybe we'll talk about it, or if you have a question, we'll be able to kind of uh, tease that out, basically. Okay. After that, we're going to go through um, looking at the Bible in a couple of different ways. Tammy uh, put some questions up, right? So these are questions that help us to maybe read the Bible in a deeper way than we have before, right? So the analogy that I gave to these guys just before we started is, if you've ever seen a mountain range, right? When you first look at it, if you don't really know what you're looking at, it just looks like there's a whole bunch of mountains, and some are bigger and some are smaller. But if you drive closer, right, and if you actually go into the mountain range, you begin to realize that there's actually layers of mountains. It's like a whole, like, it's a, it's a, a whole, um, uh, like, expanse of mountains that are deeper, actually, uh, than just, like, an initial group of larger and smaller ones. Scripture is like that as well. Uh, initially, we look at it, and it seems to be just like, oh, all right, a bunch of kind of different stories, some of, you, some of which you might understand right away. Others seem a little bit more difficult to understand. But when you get closer, you begin to realize that this is actually way deeper than we thought at the beginning. There's layers of meaning. So these questions, what they do is they help you to kind of uh, start to see, like, the different uh, the depths that, that the Scripture, every passage in Scripture has. And we'll look at those a little bit more, but I just wanted to give you a little, a little flavor of why we have those questions. Okay? So, 
we pray. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start. So if I can ask Rachel just to begin, um, you guys can follow along in your Bible or you can just listen as Rachel reads through this. Uh, we're in John chapter 13, verses 1 through 17. Hopefully you're able to find that in the Bible. Uh, and if you're just Googling it, you just Google it and, and find the translation online. So Rachel, why don't you start? Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the, who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And during supper, when the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, rose from supper, laid aside his garments, and girded himself with a towel. Then he poured water into a basin, and he began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel with which he was girded. He came to Simon Peter, and Peter said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, What I am doing you do not know now, but afterward you will understand. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no part in me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, He who is bathed does not need to wash, except for his feet. But he is clean all over, and you are clean, but not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. That was why he said, you are not all clean. When he had washed their feet and taken his garments and resumed his place, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right. For so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is he who is sent greater than he who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them stuff. Thank you, Rachel. So again, what I want you to do is kind of pay attention. Was there anything that you really liked in there that you were kind of drawn to, or was there anything that you didn't understand, right? And if there's anything that you didn't understand or you want to maybe kind of come back to, underline it, right? These guys know this, but it's I want everybody to know this. It's okay to write in your Bible. That's a, that's a good thing to do, actually. Uh, a good Bible, I think, especially like a study Bible, should be like kind of marked up, right? Uh, you can write in the in the sides and you can underline things. You can even bring a highlighter in. So anything that you guys don't understand or that you thought, oh, that was really class, kind of make a note of that, okay? Good stuff. Okay, so Joe's going to read through it a second time, and then we're going to actually dig into, like, what this means, you know, and what, what is it that um, maybe God wants us to understand through it. So, Joe. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, but he loved them to the end. And during supper, when the devil had already put, into the, put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, rose from supper, laid aside his garments, and girded himself with a towel. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel with which he was girded. He came to Simon Peter, and Peter said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, What I am doing you do not know, but afterwards you do not know now, but afterward you will understand. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no part in me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, He who has bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but he is clean all over, and you are clean, but not all of you. 
for he knew who was to betray him. That was why he said, You are not all clean. When he had washed their feet and taken his garments and resumed his place, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If then, if I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should truly do as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is he who is sent greater than he who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Awesome. Again, great thing to do. Highlight. I see some of you guys highlighting. That's excellent. And uh, same thing with you guys at home. And if you at home uh, want to maybe write in any questions that you have, or like if something really you like something, or if you don't get it, then why don't you just type it out and send it in to us, and then uh, Emily can read it out loud, or uh, Rachel, I'm not sure who's going to do that. But anyway, we'll, we'll answer your questions. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the first kind of level. Think of the mountain range, right? We're going to look at the first level, the first layer of these mountains. And that's the literal sense of the Bible, which is looking at the question of, like, what is the plain meaning of the words? Okay? So start right at the very beginning. Now, before the feast of the Passover. That's really important, right? The, nothing in the Bible is, like, uh, there just, like, for the sake of it. It has a meaning. If there's a reason why they put that in there. So, Passover. Let's remind ourselves, what is the feast of Passover? like the 10th plague and mm -hmm. they had to uh, sacrifice a lamb mm -hmm. and um, that's when like the next day all the Jewish people were set free because it was like the last chapter. That's right. So the Jews were where? In Egypt. They were in Egypt, that's right. And they were slaves in Egypt, right? And God had, had uh, God had sent who to go and to free his people? Moses. Moses, right. Very good. And so Moses was sent, and God worked through Moses and his brother Aaron, right? All of these, like, miraculous things, these plagues, right? Because he wanted to deliver the people, his people, from slavery and to bring them back to the land, the promised land. Okay. So Emily's right. So they had all these plagues, right? And on the last night, uh, the, the, the last sort of plague was that the firstborn child of all of the Egyptians, the, the people, but also the animals, would die. Right, But God uh, spared his own people, right? But he did this by uh, this lamb, right? God bless you. Do you remember what happened with the lamb? Yeah. What happened with the lamb? Did they put it on the front of the door? Yes. So they took the lamb, and they killed the lamb, and they took the blood of the lamb, all right? And they marked the front of their doors with the blood of the lamb, right? And so it was by the blood of the lamb that the people were saved from death. Okay, so some of you are with me probably in like the significance of that, right? Okay, but it was, this was the Passover. So this was where the angel passed over, the angel of death passed over the people and the people were delivered from death, okay? And they were set free then from slavery. That's the meaning of the Feast of Passover, okay? So this is before the Feast of Passover, but St. John wants us to think of Passover, right? This is really important, and it's connected with what Jesus is about to do. Sound good? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's first thing is Passover. All right, now, next thing we have is, it's just in the line after, when Jesus knew that his hour had come, he knew that his hour had come. This means that the decisive moment, this was the moment that Jesus had come for, right, had now approached, when he was going to depart out of this world, back to the Father, having loved those who were his own. And he loved them to the end. He loved them perfectly. So, in other words, Jesus has done everything the Father asked him to do, right? And now the decisive moment of his life had arrived. That's what we're approaching right now. The Last Supper, his crucifixion, his death, and his resurrection then, right? This is the decisive moment in Jesus' life. Okay? Carrying on. The washing of the feet. What? Who... What's the story with the washing of the feet? Whose job was that, first of all? Slaves. It was a slave's job. That's right. It was like a servant's job in, in someone's house. So think about like the Middle East, right? Think about Israel. 
Uh, you're walking around in your sandals, right? Your flip-flops, right? Some of these guys love their sandals and they're walking around barefoot and stuff like that. I do not do that, right? <laughs> but if you're walking around for too long with your sandals on or barefoot, especially in a place like the Holy Land, right? What happens to your feet? They're gross. They become really <laughs> dust, gross and, and dusty and stuff. Uh, if you came into someone's house, right, and if they were, you were a welcomed guest in their house, the, and the person had a bit of wealth, let's say, they would have a servant, and it was the servant's job to wash the feet of the guests of the master, right? Okay, so it was a servant's job. This is a very low, low job, okay? This is something that we need to pay attention to as well, right? Jesus washes their feet. Jesus takes, in other words, the servant's job. But notice, Jesus, who is Jesus? He's the Son of God, right? And it says that here. So you're just paying attention to the words, right? Um, let's see. Jesus, this is verse 3. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God. God had given him everything, control of everything. He had come from God himself and was going back to God. His dignity, we cannot possibly imagine, right? And look what he does. He, he gets up from supper. He lays aside his garments. They, they had like outer garments, so he took off his outer garments, right? And then he took a towel and he wrapped it around his waist. Then he knelt down in front of each of them and started to wash their feet, the job of the servant, okay? Uh... You guys were at the holy hour the other the other night, right? Some of you guys might have been tuned in. Uh, remember Philippians, right? Jesus was in the form of God, but he took on then a human form, and not only a human form, but the form of a what? A slave. The form of a slave, the form of a servant, right? So Jesus gets down. He cannot get any lower, right? Okay, Peter... What's Peter's reaction when Jesus goes to wash his feet? No. No. He says, are you, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, what I am doing you do not now understand, but afterwards you will understand. And then what does Peter say to him? Verse 8. Never. You shall never wash my feet. Why was Peter so adamant? What was that about? Is it because he knew he was the son of God? Do you think? I, I think probably, yeah. Anybody else? I also thought it was something like, um, I think they would have seen Jesus like as a leader naturally, um, like obviously like he was their teacher. Yeah. Um, so it probably would have. I feel like he probably would have been a bit embarrassed, like that he would even dare to mm. lower himself in that way. Absolutely. Or more this sort of what you think? Yeah, I, I think embarrassed and worried about Jesus's dignity. You know, this being an affront to Jesus's dignity. By the way, make sure you speak up so that the camera can pick you up. Okay. Yeah. Um, not a problem for me. <laughs> I'm plenty loud. Um, but, uh, do you remember the other time that Jesus, like, objected to Jesus saying something or doing something? What did you say, sorry? Do you remember the other time in the Gospels where Jesus, where Peter objected, St. Peter objected to something that Jesus said or did? Denying. Hmm? Denying. Was it walking on the That's another good example, yeah. That's what I, wasn't what I was thinking. But, yeah. Is it when, um, it's when Jesus is, like, going to die. Yes. What is, I can't... Jesus starts, yeah, Jesus starts telling people, telling his closest apostles that he's going to go to Jerusalem, yeah. they're going to betray him, and they're going, that he's going to be crucified, right? But he's the son of God, and they know he's the son of God, and so they're like, looking at him like, what? And so Peter is like the, the closest, right? He's his right, he's Jesus' right hand man. He pulls Jesus aside Imagine doing this to the Son of God. <laughs> he pulls Jesus aside and he's like, hey, take it easy on the whole crucifixion thing. Do you know what I mean? Like, kind of freaking people out, right? And do you remember what Jesus said? Very strong. What did he say? Get behind me, Satan. Get behind me, Satan, he said, right? Okay. So, again, what I think here we, we have is Peter, who's, who doesn't understand that this is what Jesus came for. This is exactly what Jesus came for, is to... To become like a servant and to die so that he can bring all of us out of death. Again, think the Passover, right? He can free all of us from what's enslaving us and he can deliver us from death.
Passover. Okay, we're getting ahead of ourselves. That's the first sense of the mountain range, right? That's just the, looking at the words, at the plainest meaning of the words. Passover, washing of the feet, noticing, okay, Peter seems to be pushing back on Jesus on this. Why is that, right? Okay. Does anybody have any questions about that one? Pretty good so far? Okay, we'll keep going. So the second one is called the allegorical. So these are technical terms. Don't get put off by them or anything, right? This is allegorical. So basically, the allegorical is this. Ask yourself this question. Reading this, what does this tell us about Jesus? What does this tell us about what he did during his life and what he does now, like now, in the church? So what does this tell us about Jesus? What he, do, what he did during his life and what he does now in the church. Here's a question. <clears throat> what does the washing of the feet remind you of? A religious washing. Baptism. Baptism. That's right. <laughs> it's, it, our, our mind should be thinking of baptism, right? Okay. So, baptism. Like the washing of the feet, it makes us clean, right? Cleanliness, though. When the Jewish people were kind of thinking of this, it wasn't just like, oh, my feet are dirty and I need to be made clean physically, right? There's like a ritual cleanliness, right? There's a cleaning that needed to happen in order that people would be able to approach God, okay? So Jewish people had like these really elaborate purification rituals, right? So that they could approach God. And if you didn't have those things, you did not approach God, right? So... Maybe uh, an example would be, this is just a, a, an example. It's not so much cleanliness, but uh, of like preparing yourself to encounter God. Do you remember Moses, right? Do you remember when Moses first encountered God in the burning off. bush? What did he have to do? Take his shoes off. He had to take his shoes off, that's right. In order to come into the presence of God, it is no small thing. To, be, to come close to God, God is all holy. He's all holy, and we need to be uh, cleanse from our impurity to come into the presence of the most pure God. Okay? So, Jesus washes their feet, right? What we are thinking, right, is about what Jesus asked his disciples to do, go out and baptize all nations, right? And also what he does now. Jesus, we baptize people, and it's really Jesus that's doing this cleansing work, right? Let's think about this again, right? What does Jesus say to Peter here in this? When Jesus, Peter says, you shall never wash my feet. What does Jesus tell him? I am not understanding it. Nope. Go ahead and look at it. Look at it. It's the, it's verse uh, 8. If I do not, then there's no part in me. If I do not wash you. Think about baptism now. If I do not wash you, you have no part in me. But this is baptism, right? This is, this is when we're looking at this, this is one of the meanings of this. If he doesn't wash us, we have no part in him, right? He needs to wash us. And where we are first washed is in baptism, right? We're also washed clean in confession, right? That's why when we come to, when we come to Mass and we receive Holy Communion, what's it important to do first before we do that? Go to confession. If we have things that are that are making us uh, that are that have kind of uh, what's the word um, made our souls like impure, things that are that need to be forgiven and washed away. That's where that happens. It happens in confession, first in baptism and then in confession. Right? Uh, you're not baptized many many times. You know we don't sort of like you know hold you under the water. Do you know what I mean? If you <laughs> if you really sinned. <laughs> Sometimes I'd love to do that. But no, you don't do that, right? No, you hear people's confessions, and that's what you do. Okay. So, baptism is necessary for us. This is important for us to get. Baptism is necessary for us to share in Jesus' life. If I do not wash you, you have no part in me. And it's necessary for us to receive the blessings that he wants us to receive. Okay? Sound good? All right. It gets deeper. And it gets even more, okay? So one level of this is baptism, a religious washing, okay? Here's a second one, though. There's another time, and this, this involves a little bit of history, okay? Uh, a little bit of Bible history. 
but there's a second time where this washing takes place, okay? It takes place in the book of Leviticus, way back in the Old Testament, okay? And it takes place again with Moses and with his brother Aaron, right? Or Aaron, as you say in Ireland. Aaron. 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 I'll put the diary. Aaron. <laughs> Aaron. I'm going to call him Aaron. Okay. So, Moses. Moses takes Aaron and his sons, and he sets them aside. And God tells Moses, this is in Leviticus chapter 8. Moses brought Aaron and his sons and washed them with water. And he put on him the coat and girded him with the girdle and clothed him with the robe and put the ephod on him and girded him with a skillfully woven band of the ephod. These are just bindings, right? And he poured some of the anointing oil on Aaron's head and anointed him to consecrate him. What was Moses making Aaron? He was making him a priest. Oh, wow! <laughs> I know! What, the ritual for ordaining priests in the Jewish religion involves washing. It involves the washing, the making ritually pure of the men who are being made priests. Who, who was being made a priest then? Aaron's sons? Aaron and his sons. Oh, the three of them? Yeah. Oh, I remember. Yeah, that's wow. right. Wow. So, right? So now you're reading... The Last Supper, right? And who is Jesus there with? He's not there with his big group of disciples. He's there with how many people? The twelve. He's there with the twelve apostles. And now he takes off these garments. He bends down and he washes these men, right? And then, if you go later on in the Gospel of St. John, right, in chapter 17, it says that he consecrates them. He's consecrate. He's making these men priests, right? And then what does he do, right? Then he says, at the very end of the chapter, the thing that we read, right? Truly I say to you, a servant is no greater than his master, nor is he who is sent greater than he who sent him. Who sent Jesus? God the Father, right? Now what is Jesus doing to these men? He's consecrating them, he's washing them, he's consecrating them, in other words, making them holy or setting them aside, and then he is sending them. He's sending them to go and to, to continue his work. He says, you call me teacher and Lord, and you're right, and I've given you an example. Is that not what priests do? Yeah. Priests wash us, right? Make us clean in baptism and where else? In? Confession, right? Priests teach us. You call me teacher and Lord. The whole Lord thing, right? Maybe you can understand it in a sort of more general way as like a leader, right? A priest is a leader. And he gives example. What Jesus is doing is he's not only teaching us about baptism. He, we can also learn in here that Jesus then and now makes calls men to be priests. And their role as priests is not to be better than other people, but it's to do what? Is to be like him, which is to become a, a servant. Washing, teaching, uh, giving example. They are the least important people. They exist, just like Jesus, in order to, to help people uh, to get to help people come closer to heaven. That's what they do. And this is what we see happening here. Okay? Can you see how that's like, you know, we're sort of understanding, like, what is Jesus, what did he do during his life, and what does he continue to do now in the life of the church, right? Baptism and priestly ordination, right? Okay, cool. Now, next one. Ready for the next one? Or do you have any questions about that? Yes? If he's... Nice and loud. Yeah. If he's, like instituting the priesthood at this point. How come he does the same for Jews? Yes. I, I know. <laughs> it is a, uh, it's a, it's a, it is ultimately a mystery of the, of the Lord's kind of, uh, the Lord's plan, the Lord's will. Yeah. Like, he knows. We know he knows, right? We know he knows, obviously, because he's Jesus, right? But it says, literally, he knows. Uh, 
During the supper, when the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son to betray him. Jesus knows this, right? And yet he still washes his feet. That's an extraordinary thing. Yeah, sorry, yeah. Uh, could this be like sort of an example of like his mercy, his forgiveness? Like he knows that we're going to commit our sins mm. before we even do it, but when we still come to him, we're, we're still forgiven. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that could be could be part of it, absolutely. And I think the other thing is, like, we all know that um, Jesus doesn't, uh, like, Jesus doesn't just call the perfect, yeah. right? He doesn't. He doesn't just call the perfect. And sometimes, the awful thing about the dignity that we have as human beings, we have free will, yeah. right? And the awful thing about that free will is that sometimes we can do horrific things. Yeah. And even priests, even men who have been... This guy, Judas, was with him for three years. He saw Jesus feed the multitude, 5,000 people with a, a few loaves of bread and fish. Judas saw him raise Lazarus from the dead. He saw him heal blind men. He saw him make people who couldn't walk, walk. He saw all these things and still Judas betrayed him. The awful reality of human nature, and it's true for all of us, is that we're capable of of we're capable of treating people terribly and we're capable of being um, of, of walking away from our faith yeah. it's a uh, again the difference between Judas and Peter right is that what Judas betrayed him Peter abandoned him right so did the rest of them What's the difference between Judas and Peter? Peter came back. Peter came back. Peter came back and received the mercy of the Lord, which he gives. Do you know? But it's an awful thing of human nature. Do you know? And I think the question that you ask is is fitting. You know? Um, yeah, I don't have a great. I don't have a great sort of like. Oh, this now. This is this is why it makes total sense now. I don't have that. It's just like it's one of the, what it says to me is just how, like, our human nature, like, we're capable of, like, loving God and, and real heroism, being, like, really heroic, but we're also capable of uh, real betrayal and, um, yeah. Okay, so, we'll go on to the next one. So, the next one is the, what's called the tropological, okay? Now, tropological just means the moral sense of the scripture. Again, looking at the mountain range, the first part of the range is like the literal, like the words, what does that actually mean, the plainest words? The second one is, okay, what does this tell us about Jesus, about what he did during his life, and what he continues to do now in the church? Third section is, what does this teach us about how we should live now? So this is where it kind of gets really personal, about like, okay, what does this teach us about how to live our lives? We're followers of Jesus, what does this teach us, right? Okay, first of all, Peter refuses initially, and then he accepts. He accepts in like a really typical way. Peter is super, he's all in. Peter's really impetuous. I love Peter. Peter's great. So like Peter, Peter says, no, you will never wash me. And Jesus says, unless I wash, if I do not wash you, you have no part in me. And so then what, is, what does Peter say? Everything. Everything, Lord. Okay. <laughs> Lord, not my feet only, but my hands and my head. Do you know, like, let it rain. <laughs> Do you know, Jesus, he's, Peter's like all in. He loves Jesus so much, and when Jesus corrects him, he's, he's, he takes it. Do you know what I mean? So, um, what does this teach us, though, about uh, the way that uh, we should live, right? So, first of all, Peter's acceptance, right? What does this teach us? That Peter lets Jesus wash his feet. What do you think this teaches us? To be loved by other people. Yeah. Humility. He was like wrong and then he loved. So, yeah, I think those are two really good things. It teaches us about to allow ourselves to be loved. Let Jesus love us. And to be humble, right? To, uh, when Jesus kind of shows us something, something maybe needs to change in our attitude, then we actually do that. Mm 
Is that what you mean? Mm. Yeah, I think that's. I think the, I think those are two absolutely things that we can take away from this. What else? Anybody else said anything else that that kind of teaches us? On Emily's point, what I kind of got out of that was like, we need to let Jesus do the work that he wants to do and to trust that he knows better than us. Mm-hmm. And that's that humility. Mm-hmm. Jesus knows better than us. Do you know the other thing that it kind of came back to? And it's, it's something that Rachel actually mentioned there, right? What are your feet like? Disgusting. They're disgusting. They're smelly. Some of them are hairy. Joe is Hobbit's feet. I don't know if anyone knew that. Your feet are not something you want people near, typically, right? Okay. We need to let Jesus near the places that we don't want him to be in, right? We need to let Jesus into those places where we would rather he not be looking at and paying attention to, right? We all have those places where we wish no one would even look. We're just kind of like, I'm really uncomfortable I am sensitive about this area in my life. Obviously, it's not your feet, but think about other things, you know? Maybe it's your, your relationship with your parents. Maybe it's a sin that you are, that really has like a grip on you in your life. And it, maybe you're really ashamed about it, you know? And you don't want Jesus anywhere near that. Or, um, you know, maybe it's a, it's a, I don't know, like a, a really, um, a big wound in your, um, in, in your like self-confidence, you know, it could be in any number of things that we kind of are like, that are sensitive, you know, we're kind of sensitive about, right? I think one of the things that this teaches us anyway is, uh, that we can trust Jesus, number one, and that we should let him do what he wants to do and even let him near those places that we're, we'd rather he not go. Okay. Next one. What does Jesus tell them to do? To do it to others. Yeah. He says now, okay, I'm giving you an example, right? And if I am your teacher and your Lord and I'm doing this for you, then you should do this for others, right? What does that mean? What does that teach us about how we should live? Jesus tells us to wash each other's feet. Does that mean literally that we're supposed to go and wash each other's feet? No, that's not what that means. (laughs) Not a trick question. Not a trick question. But what does that mean in terms of how we should live? What do you think? Being nice. Being nice. Okay, yeah. Do to others what you would want to be done to yourself, sorry. Yeah, very good. Be kind, do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. Yeah, very good. Like you kind of talked about it during the Holy Hour the other day, like, and treat yourself as the least in the room. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I thought. Like, trying to be most humble and looking to serve. Looking for an opportunity for opportunities to serve. So let me get really practical and uncomfortable. You're gonna hate this, by the way. Uh, you have dinner, and you're sitting around afterwards, and your mother gets up to start clearing the dishes. What does washing the feet look like there? Get getting up and doing it. Mm-hmm. Is looking looking and seeing. How can I be of service to my mom, to my brothers and sisters who are at home right now? Everybody's at home. Everybody's stuck at home, right? And the most natural thing, the thing that comes easiest for us, is for us to think about ourselves, right? And to try to do the least amount that we possibly can. And to let other people do as much as we can possibly get away with them doing, right? But that's, Jesus is teaching us otherwise here, right? And just to point this out, not only is this the right thing to do, but this is the, this is the way to live really fully, right? Uh, Jesus said the last line. What is the last line in what we read? Verse 17. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Blessed are you if you do them, right? 
if you want to start to live more joyfully, more gratefully, more fully, become more selfless. <laughs> the more selfish you are, the more miserable you are. I guarantee you. The most miserable people I know are the most self-absorbed. The people who are most selfless, who are looking for opportunities to serve other people, who are uh, who kind of regard themselves kind of last, and they're kind of just looking... It's not that they have a bad opinion of themselves or they have no self-confidence. They're just like... They're looking for opportunities to... like. Um, to love other people. Those are the people who are most happy and are that are most joyful. And that's the truth. You are blessed if you're living like this. Jesus is teaching us not only this is how you should live, this is how you should want to live. Okay. Last one. Anagogical. So again, layers of mountains, right? First layer, what is it that... Um, what are the plain meaning of the words? Second level. What does Jesus what does this tell us about what Jesus did during his life and what he does now in the church? Third level, tropological. What does this teach us about how to live now? How we should be living? And the last one is the anagogical, right? What does this teach us about heaven and hell and purgatory and judgment and the last things? The things that we're all kind of going to face you know, in our, you know, at, when we die. What is Jesus, what is happening when Jesus gets up and he washes their feet? What is happening? Where are they? Like in the, in the spiritual sense? Nope. Oh. Where are they literally? In the dining room table? They're, they're eating. They're having a meal, right? That's what they are. They're having a meal, Okay. And Jesus gets up and he washes their feet, right? His washing, again, think of baptism, makes us ready for what? For eternal life, for heaven. His washing in, in the, the washing of the feet makes them ready for this meal, right? His washing of us in baptism makes us ready for heaven, okay? Uh, what kind of cleansing needs to happen, right? Their feet needed to be washed for the meal, right? The cleansing of baptism and the cleansing of our conversion, you know, our being changed. What is that? It's not the cleansing of our bodies. What is it? It's what being cleansed? Our souls and our heart, right? These are the, the cleansing of our heart, okay? Um, this happens in baptism, but it also happens in, uh, in our faith, right? and in listening to kind of God's word. It's God that does the work, right? It's not like it's just you being really, really good, right? It's about Jesus washing you and Jesus speaking to you like in his, wor in his word and changing us. He does, the, he does the work and we cooperate with him. Okay, I have this really beautiful um, reflection from Pope Benedict. Pope Benedict is like, my gosh, I'm telling you, some of the things that he, that he has is just are gorgeous, right? So... He talks, um, he's, he's referencing another part of the Bible, which is the Acts of the Apostles, right? And he's, he's talking about these Gentiles. So these are not Jewish people, right? Who are now coming to know God, and they're becoming baptized, and they're becoming followers of Jesus, right? And he sa the, the scriptures say that God cleansed their hearts by faith, right? Now, this is what Pope Benedict says about faith, right? This is for you guys as well. Faith comes about because men, human beings are touched deep within by God's Spirit who opens and purifies their hearts. We are touched by God's Spirit who opens and purifies our hearts. This is what happens. This is what, what how faith comes about in us. Is this from the Acts? This is from the Acts of the Apostles that they cleansed their hearts by faith. God cleansed their hearts by faith. That's Acts 15, chapter 15, verse 11. So faith comes about because we are touched by God. God's spirit comes into our lives, right? He opens our hearts and he purifies our hearts, especially by the scriptures, to be honest with you. Reading the scriptures and through the sacraments and through other people in our lives, you know? Like that's how God kind of touches our hearts and he opens us and he purifies us. Okay, the last thing that I think, again, is just beautiful, right? Again, all of this, the washing of the feet... 
takes place at the Last Supper, right? Okay. Here's what Pope Benedict says about this, right? He says, Jesus, divest. In other words, he takes off. He takes off his divine splendor. He takes off his garments, right? So he takes off like his, his splendor, all of his dignity. He like puts it to the side. He, as it were, kneels down before us. He washes and dries our soiled feet in order to make us fit to sit at the table for God's wedding feast. <laughs> That's heaven, you guys. That's heaven, okay? So, what Jesus is doing there is he's kneeling down and washing and drying their feet. What he does for all of us through especially the Eucharist, through confession, through baptism, is he's, he kneels down before us, humble, so humble, and he washes us, our feet, our disgusting feet, <laughs> and he purifies us, and he makes us ready to sit at table at God's wedding feast. That's heaven. That is what's happening here, right? So, when we read this, we can see that, like, this is not just, like, oh, something that happened 2,000 years ago. It's something that teaches us a lot about what Jesus did then and does now. It teaches us a lot about the way that we should live, and it also teaches us about what he's doing, like, making us ready for heaven, right? He's washing us, he's making us clean, he's making us ready for, to sit at this banquet in heaven, right? Heaven is often described in the Bible as this big banquet and like a wedding banquet, like the, the mother of all parties, right? Um, this is what, uh, this is the, the sum of the depth of this passage from scripture. Now, do any of you have any questions about that? Is there a question? Oh yeah, does anybody have any questions? <laughs> Sorry, does anyone have any questions? If anyone does, you can fire them out there now. Or does anyone like anything or find anything particularly beautiful or anything that kind of spoke to you? The Bucharest cloth. I know. Oh, it's yeah. it's gorgeous. Like, oh. Some of those things are just like, oh man, it hit you, it hits you right in the heart. Mm. And you know, like, even though this is a study, we're not doing like a lot of prayer right now, you'll notice it's not like we're we're praying with the scriptures. There's different ways you can pray with the Bible too. But uh, we're studying. But all this stuff is like food for us. All this stuff we can like helps us to pray. We learn more about who Jesus is and what he does for us. That should make us more grateful. And we thank Jesus for this. Or we look forward and we, we like, it kind of, uh, it whets our appetite for heaven. And to be with him, to be close to him. Like the, this should really like kind of, it, it's like food, like substantial food for prayer. It powers us for prayer. Anybody else? Anything else that really you loved or you, you didn't get? or um, Something like, so my prayer this morning, um, I was reading um, through the Passion. I was sharing this with Emily. Um, and like the bit, um, like like just all the different translations like in all the Gospels. Um, and when they talk about like Judas and his betrayal um, and like in most of the Gospels, he's like, he betrays him with a kiss. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I've, uh, I have the book Into Me Your Soup. Um, and in that book, uh, at some point he mentions, like, if Judas would have just looked at Jesus, the betrayal would have been washed from his heart. Um, and so, like, just kind of seeing it here again, like, like, like Jesus washes Judas' feet, but still that betrayal, like, is there. Yeah. Um, and just to kind of, like, I don't know, it, 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 it's just mind-blowing. Mm -hmm. Like, like, I feel like if Jesus was to get down on his feet, um, like, on his knees and, like, wash my feet, like, how could you have betrayal in your heart? I know. You know? Yeah. Like, it, it just kind of, mm. like, in my head, it just kind of picks, like, this, like, paints this picture of just, like, yeah. complete betrayal. Yeah. Like, complete. It is. It's extraordinary. And yet, it's amazing what he, you can justify, right? Jesus doesn't kneel down and wash our feet, but Jesus makes himself so small that he can fit in your hand. Mm -hmm. And we betray him all the time. 
You know, he, you do not get any more humble than the Eucharist, right? He makes himself so small that literally we can, we can treat him terribly. And we do all the time. And it's like, we do it thoughtlessly. I think that that's a really good point. Like, you know, if he just looked at him, in other words, if he just like stopped and thought, what am I doing? You know, I think most people, myself included, like we just don't think like what we're doing. We just kind of like plow on and we, it's like we, I don't know, we, we don't think about like, um, that, that like we're being unfaithful sometimes when we're being unfaithful, we don't think about it. I also think it's powerful to think too, like had Judas come back to him afterwards, he would have been like, yeah, bring it on. That's it. We could have been reading about Judas as a, a great apostle to a different country. Yeah. We could have. We could have. We absolutely could have done that. He, and he, uh, Jesus would have welcomed him back completely. Absolutely. Just like he did Peter. Just like he did all the other apostles who abandoned him. Hmm. And they ended up being like these amazing missionaries. Yeah. I mean, like, Peter went all the way to Rome. Do you know what I mean? Like, St. Thomas went. We think to India. You know what I mean? Like, they just, they, they just, and they were like, they went on fire. <laughs> they went and they were like, you know, like meteors, you know, like kind of like just blazing across the earth. Extraordinary. Yeah. Judas could have been that. We can be that. Yeah. We, we can be that. Yeah. Not just them. Yeah. We can be that. Jesus asks us to do that to you, doesn't he? Yeah. He does. <laughs> he really does. And he, he, he gives us everything that we need. He washes our feet. He gives us the food that we need. You know, he teaches us. He corrects us and challenges us. Yeah. Let me just ask, will you be doing scripture studies regularly? This has been lovely. Thanks so much. Oh, good. And go to Grant. Christ, you're <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think I think we definitely do it regularly, maybe once a week or something. Would be okay. Would it be? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll we'll figure that out and we'll announce that to everybody to be to be determined. Okay. We finish with a prayer. Yeah. Great. One of you guys want to lead us in prayer, please. Sure. In the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hey Jesus, thank you so much for this time to just get deeper with you and Scripture. Thank you for just being present with us as we always are. And thank you for just allowing all the people that are at home as well to be in, what would you say, communion? In communion with us as well as we do this. I ask that you just continue to bless our day, our evening, and the rest of our week. And Mary, we entrust ourselves to you also. As we say, Hail Mary. Full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all and everybody as well at home. Peace. See you, See you later.